Hi, this is the fellow passenger. And in this video, we're going to look at the operator again. I want to call this video something like the operator doesn't have four um, operators. It has like 10 or something. That would have been a mouthful and it would also not be true. But in essence, there is way more ways within operators to do frequency modulation other than these four operators. And that's what we're going to look at today. It will be quite atonal, but interesting if you're into sound design. If you are new to FM synthesis or you just don't understand the underlying concept, check out a link in the description to a quick explanation there that I've done. It's only a few minutes long if you want to get your head around that. Okay, so let's look at how we can do this. I suppose this video is gonna be a bit stupid, but there we are. Okay, this is in its default um, state when you open it. And then, as you may know, you can use these other operators here to create some FM. That bit you probably already know. So how can we find more ways of modulating? First, we should perhaps just talk a little bit about the difference between an operator and something else that can modulate the FM. I think the definition of an operator, I say think because I haven't heard this spelled out, but I think of an operator being not just an oscillator. It is an oscillator here. You've got the waveform for the oscillator, but it's also an amp where you can change the volume and it's got its own envelope. So it's almost its own little synth voice in its own right. It has all those different components attached to it. And those are the ones that you would generally think of um, as the things to do the frequency modulation with. But let's start here with our basic operator. We've got our sine wave. Then where can we find other ways of manipulating the frequency? The obvious first choice would be the LFO. Yes, correct. So let's turn the amount up. I should also turn the release off because as soon as you let go, okay. I think that is perhaps just outside of audio rate. Well, is it audio rate? I don't think it is. Now to perhaps the slightly less obvious way of doing frequency modulation is using a looping envelope. So again, we got our um, basic oscillator here. Um, I've removed all the release. So if you go down to this little section here where it says loop, we turn that down to milliseconds. Um, it's going to be more noticeable if we remove the sustain. So as you can see here, if I set it to 20 milliseconds, it's quite a long loop still, but the loop is affected by when it reaches the end of the decay stage. So if we turn the decay down, There we've got some FM for you. So this all of a sudden becomes quite a atonal. I'm pressing different keys here. Because this frequency is the same, but the core oscillator is changing depending on the key I am pressing. So it's a little bit like you would use two operators and one is set to fixed. So it's only one of the operators that is actually tracking with the keyboard. We can remedy this a bit. And I'm going to explain why. There's also this section here which says time. If you're not familiar with what that is doing, it's actually changing the duration of all the envelopes. So for all the oscillators and for the filter and the uh, LFO, etc. So if I just turn this up, I'm going to explain what it does. Now, 
now we can set um, our keyboard. So if we click on this section here, we have our modulation section. So if we go to key and we set that that should modulate time and we are going to set it to minus 100 because then it means that the um, it will be inverted. The lower key I press, the higher the time will be. So now it's not going to track exactly according to the notes of keyboard. I was almost going to say volt per octave, which is the term generally used for a Eurorack system or something like that. But uh, there is no voltage in that sense, but it's in similar sort of vein here. So slow time, let's see. So we can get slightly <laughs> more tonal content out of this, but it's still not going to be exact key. So uh, let's have a look if we go back to this section here. So you can get some quite interesting tones. Now this loop section actually exists on all the oscillators, but it also exists on the LFO, on the filter, and then also on the pitch envelope, which means that we have quite a lot of FM capability. Just to get a sense of what this sounds like for the different ones, I'm just going to turn this off again. We set that to none. And if we turn on the pitch envelope, we can also set this to loop. I should probably set the sustain. that off again and then we can try it with a filter so we have to set that the envelope should affect the filter we set that to 100 Filter tends to be easier to hear if we don't have a sine wave. Let's do a saw or something. And the same with the LFO. So if we turn the, the filter off again, and we can set the LFO just to affect the filter. Oh, we don't have to have the filter on, but we turn the envelope off. And then we loop this. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so there you go. You maybe thought that this video was going to be really long, and it sort of is, but we're done with instructions. I hope you get the idea. It's noisy, yes, but that can be good if you're making IDM, which is what we're going to do now. So we're going to take this and create a rhythm. We need a sequencer to sequence uh, whatever is going on here. I have no idea if this is a good idea. So let's do the... I've used this sequencer before. It's a free download from uh, the internet. Uh, so just randomize. Uh, I've made a new MIDI track and um, the sequence is running now, so I'm randomizing the octave. And then we're going to take an expression control, but we're not going to use it in the way that I always do. We are going to set this to key tracking. So we got the sequencer now just tracking tracking the key. This means that we are going to get a little bit of a looping effect. Uh, well, that's what I thought. So this one, we basically just need to create a sequence here. I'm just going to do one note sequence. set this to run a bit slower. And 84 BPM is not what we want. And then we go back to this section and I'm going to make a group out of this because we maybe want to have multiple sequences. So I'm going to copy that and then we're just going to randomize the octave and randomize the pitch as well. Uh, and this one needs to be mapped to other things. So the first one here is still mapped uh, to those things. And here we've got a separate sequence that is going to modulate, let's say the pitch of that and the pitch of this. Sounds nice and metallic somehow. I think it's good. This is, um, and to make things really luscious, we are going to put OTT on that. And let's say that we are copying that uh, melody as we got um, another operator playing the same thing. This one, I'm just going to change the setting. Yeah. 
Maybe we want to randomize the pitch. Can we actually change the pitch of this? Is it going to affect it in any way? Oh, that's fixed. And then we need a beat under that. I'm going to use that new drum machine that I presented in the previous video. Um, I've come to like it quite a lot. Uh, where does it live? It lives in presets. It lives here, drum a one. So I'm just going to make a very basic little beat using it. Uh, no, that's not what we want. We want a new MIDI channel. We don't want it on our... So that's the uh, metallic clang. And then we have our um, more tonal, <laughs> tonal, uh, tonal multi-FM thing. And this is just a modulating sequence. And then we have, this is our beat. Okay. So let's just... Uh, this is our beat. I haven't pasted it in here yet. There is nothing. Uh, come on, baby. There we are. Okay. So we got. These ones can be slightly less likely. Um, we can do. I'm not going to use any of the glitches here because I think the glitches in what we've just made is going to be. And then um, we are not doing pristine stuff here. So we are just going to ruin this a bit more by adding a drum bus. I was speaking to user friendly, the guy I interviewed a few months ago uh, and Ned Rush for that matter. In the same conversation, we were talking about the drum bus and how they set, up, set it up. I know they love it a lot. I sort of like it, but I just tend to make everything too boomy with it. So they differ, but I like the idea of uh, what his friend was saying, like turn the transients down and turn the compressor on. But I'm also turning the drive down, which is the opposite to what user friendly said, I think. And it, that was um, Ned's, Ned Rush comment. Um, And then we are, of course, going to take and probably need to pull down. Uh, that's not the one I want. I want EQ8 it's because I got that one. I want EQ8 and I'm going to reduce around 200 hertz uh, because I always know that there is too much stuff happening there. And this one is at 30. We turn that down a bit and then we're going to do a fairly hard cut. There. Sounds pretty good, actually. That sounds pretty sweet. Uh, and then we can do the trick that I like doing. To add a bit of space, to add a very, very, very subtle reverb in front uh, of loads of compression sounds nice.
going over into red. But are we worried about that? N not really for this. Why? Because I just put a limit to that and now it's cut off. It's probably screwing up the audio signal just as much, but um, we are not after anything clear and transparent here, are we? I think this sounds pretty sweet. Yes, that's what we want. The thing that I tend to do often, but I quite like it, if you use my coin flipping thing, um, I've explained it loads of times, but if you are new to this, um, basically it rolls the dice and I'm setting the likelihood here. Every time this channel receives a MIDI note, it rolls the dice, whether it should be in the left or the right hand side. And I can change, if it's in the middle, that's 50-50 chance where it's ending up. So I'm going to set it a uh, fairly low chance. So, uh, well, it's gonna be much more likely to end up on this side rather than on the left, uh, right hand side. So if it ends up on the left hand side, I, it will create a random value between zero and zero. So it's basically gonna be zero, but if it occasionally, it will end up on this side and then it's going to create um, a value that is a bit higher. And I'm going to map that to the send reverb. So every now and then it will send some of our metal metallic clans off to this uh, reverb here. <laughs> we're done i enjoy that it this is just an interesting way of thinking of about using fm beyond the four operators that you're given in the operator i hope you enjoyed this and if you feel like you can support my channel please check out my patreon below i will give you this project file but um there's lots of other stuff you can get as well of course you will be able to get this um this drum rack, which I've completely synthesized using the operator, actually. Um, I talked about it in my previous video, but if you missed that, it's a real opportunity. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to be back soon with a new video. Take care. Bye.